What's new? New. All right, we've got, um, I see this in like little toys and stuff. It's a double CR2032 battery holder, but it's like a, like a pancake style. It's uh, top to bottom. Um, we have one that's uh, side to side style, and uh, I thought it would be kind of cool to have this. I'll just show it on the overhead real fast because I want to show how it's put together. Okay, so, oh my goodness, this is out here. So, uh, I have it here. I'm just showing it's powering this LED. It has a nice on off switch. This uh, pops open, and then you can see it holds two uh, coin cell batteries. So, again, it's, it's like if you want something that's pancake style, um, this works quite well. I like how there, it's a very pokey outy switch, so you'll, you can't miss it. I see these a lot in like little toys and games and stuff. Um, it just comes with bare wires. I soldered them onto this LED. But handy if you want, you know, a very small uh, coin cell battery holder that can power your six volt project. Next. All right. More of these. Next up, more of these. So these are uh, adorable little silicone nubules um, that stick into your ports to keep them dust free. Uh, we have construction going on, so actually my ports are getting dusty. Uh, so we have them in USB A, and here is USB C. Um, so these fit into the ports. So yeah. USB-A, uh, USB-C goes into port, so it's shown here. And then HDMI. So if you have a computer with HDMI or maybe you have a Raspberry Pi with HDMI, slot them in. Yeah. Um, they come in packs of 10 each. They're soft silicone rubbery. Um, they work quite well, and uh, I'm kind of into them. So. Yeah, at first I'm just like, am I going a little too far? And then it um, turns out I wasn't going far enough. Okay, yeah. next up. Okay, next up. We've got um, some terminal block uh, breakouts for the Raspberry Pi Pico. If you have a Pico, you're probably like, hey, why don't we use this for industrial uses? You want to connect this up to a DIN rail. Um, so we've got two terminal block setups. This one is kind of like the narrow, thin version. Um, let me grab it and I'll show it off because there's, there's stuff on the sides here. Okay, so uh, Raspberry Pi Pico, of course, Plugs in like so. Um, hold on a moment. Okay, focus lock. Uh, you can see the USB over here, and then if you wanted to solder in the headers for the uh, debug port, you can do that as well. And then um, it comes. This PCB uh, comes fully assembled, and then every terminal block has a nice label showing you. It's one by one, right? So it's like each pin matches up with the the pin on the Pico. So there's a lot of grounds, and then you've got all the power pins over here more GPIO over there, everything nicely labeled. And then you can mount this onto um, a DIN rail or onto an enclosure, um, because it's, nice, it's got this nice uh, kind of DIN rail -y. It's It's DIN rail looking, but it's actually not, uh, it doesn't have the, the sliders for a DIN rail. But um, you could probably get the sliders and add it on, or you can just mount it using these two little ears okay. over here. Next up. Next up, uh, similar, but not quite the same. This one is a terminal block breakout, but it's like side to side mode instead of like long mode. I don't know how to, to say this, but these are much bigger terminal blocks. Um, Pico still plugs in onto the top here, and then you've got these 45 degree terminal blocks. The wires go in from the side and you screw them down. Everything is again labeled one by one. Uh, this would be better for thicker wires, I think. It's, you know, it's a bigger construction, uh, it doesn't come with the nice plastic bottom, right? So you, this, is, this is for direct usage. There are some mounting holes, but you know, people are always like, hey, I just want to plug it in and, and terminal block connect something for a robot or industrial use. Uh, these two do the job quite nicely. Okay, next up is a Bluetooth clock. That's why the code was BT clock. Okay, so, here so it is. Bluetooth clock. Let's go to uh, the overhead so maybe it'll change over while I'm talking about it. Yep. Okay. So uh, this, this is a Bluetooth, um, Bluetooth e-ink clock. Uh, it is not like a full pixel display. It's a segmented display. So in case you're like, can I have a display anything I want and hack it? No, like you're not going to have a display anything more than uh, what you see here. It um, has a kind of a generic Bluetooth chipset inside. It has this e-ink display that updates once a minute. So hopefully in the next few seconds it'll update. And it also has uh, humidity. So here is the humidity and percentage and temperature. Uh, it's in centigrade right now, but you can change it to Celsius. This little happy face just says, hey, you know, that 
it's good humidity, good temperature for humans. I don't know, it's a happy human face. Um, the reason we're stocking this is that even though you can't reprogram this, oh, there you go, it's, it just changed. So you saw that was a, um, a change that was a partial update because it only updated uh, two segments. And then if we wait another minute, it will update the whole display. So if it's, if it's cool, we'll hang out here. Uh, inside, yeah. it is emitting the time, I think, definitely the, the humidity and temperature over Bluetooth as like data signals. And so a lot of people who have an ESP32 using Home Assistant or even using our code uh, with Blinka or Circuit Playground, you can read the temperature and humidity that's being sent from this board as, a, as on your um, Bluetooth controller. So this acts as a yeah. peripheral and it's like, it's not an advertisement, you, you would connect to it and you can read the data, but it's a very nice like all in one, um, not only like a clock that runs for quite a long time, but as a sensor node. So we have the little mini sensor nodes that we stocked. Now we just have the larger one that's also a nice game clock. I'll say the only thing that's a little annoying. I guess. Full, full just update. The only thing that's a little annoying is that if you want to, and then when it does an hour, it actually does the full screen clean. So you saw that. Yeah. Um, to set the um, time, you have to use a computer. Um, there's an app, but the app only runs in China. And then if you put your app in China mode, if you if you set your region to China, then the um, time zone is wrong. Basically, uh, we link to a web Bluetooth application that you can use. You just connect to it. Use Chrome because it has web Bluetooth. Connect to it, and then you set the time through your browser. You only have to do it once. Okay. The ink clock. Next Very nice. up. Oh, it's got a little magnet bomb. Uh, okay, this is a, uh, this is really easy. It's just two uh, double-sided foam pieces. We include these in a lot of kits, and once in a while people are like, I need more of these foams, or I didn't get the foams, or I lost my foams. We now just have them as a two-pack of foam. Okay, and last up, the start of the show tonight, besides you, Lady, our, our community, our team. Yeah, one second, sorry. Our I customers. Dropped. I dropped. I dropped things. Yeah, you, you're just like, goodbye, Trinky. I just threw it. Flew it off. It, it is the Adafruit. Keycap. Custom keycap. Limited edition. We we're not going to probably do these forever. Um, coming soon. It's coming soon. Sign up. We don't put our logo on anything. It's just one of the things that we decided to do. When we Usually do put it on something. Boards, yeah, yeah, we put it on the circuit boards. Um, so this is something special. And I yeah. think people will enjoy it. Because what they'll do is they'll put this keycap on their computer. And they'll set it up to go to the Adafruit site. Or maybe our YouTube channel or whatever. So let's take a look at the world premiere of the a for keycap. Okay, all right, so, um, yes, yeah, so I found a service that will make a custom keycap, and the way this works is actually, if you look, it's a translucent plastic keycap, and then it has a thin, opaque black coating that's then etched away, right? So you can kind of see that. You can see the reverse on the bottom. So the only thing is, obviously, keys don't have the LEDs in the center, although we're looking at trying to find a, a, a key that does have an LED that can emit through the center. In general, they emit from the top, north side or south side, whatever, they're, they're from the side. So it's just something to watch for. We etched, the, these come in R4 styling, so they're kind of used for like escape keys or like if you want to have a function key. Um, so we kind of recommend that you put it so that the angle makes it so it's towards the LED. It's not going to be fully lit. You can see it's a little shadowed, but it still looks really good. Um, yeah. And also, the, I didn't want to have it only in the top because sometimes people have south keys and some people have east or west. So basically, you know, it'll work okay even if it's, you know, on the opposite side of the LED. It just won't glow as much, but it still, it still definitely glows through. Um, so we are starting with a custom Adafruit keycap and then uh, stay tuned because we're going to get there more, more we'll see. custom keycaps. But I like these because they work great with our Neo keys. I have it here on a yeah. Neo key trinky because it's just an easy way to have one key glow. Um, but of course, this works on any keyboard with a Cherry MX cross. So it's a very, very, very common uh, key type. Chances are if you have a mechanical keyboard, uh, pop one of the keys off. If it has a little cross section, then you can use this key. And that's new products. Thank you.